Hello everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 24. In this tutorial we are going to look into constant buffers. So what is a constant buffer? Well currently when we are drawing we don't have any way to pass in uh, like other variables that our shader will use. Everything just has to be set up in our vertices when we initialize them. For example in our graphics CPP if we go to initialize scene, you know, currently the only stuff we can really pass into our shaders, we are uh, setting them all right here. But what we can do is we can actually have uh, something called a constant buffer. So to clear it, we put in C buffer and we will just call this uh, my C buffer for now. We'll change that later. And uh, what we could do is we could put variables here that we can update uh, before we actually draw. So to show this example, I'm going to put in a float for our x offset and a float for our y offset. And this will just be uh, how much to offset the image that we are drawing. Now one more thing is after you declare a constant buffer, you can register it to a buffer slot. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So what this is saying is we want to use the first buffer slot. If we wanted to make another constant buffer and have it use the second buffer slot, we would put B1 and etc. So we have put in our constant buffer and let's say that we want to uh, adjust the in position by the X offset and Y offset. What we could do is we could do input IntelliSense is kind of weird with HLSL. Okay, adjust by, or adjust the x by the x offset, and we will adjust the y by the y offset. So now we need to actually modify this in our code. So let's go to the graphics header. We are going to create a new buffer for our uh, constant buffer. All right, and we just called that constant buffer. Next, what we have to do is we have to create a struct that will have our constant buffer layout. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new header, and we're going to call this header constant buffer types. And let's include DirectX map. So we had two floats, so let's create a struct for a constant buffer, and this is going to be for a vertex shader, so I'm prefixing it, it with CB for constant buffer, VS for vertex shader, and I'm just going to call it the same thing as our shader, so vertex shader. And we are going to have a float for our X offset, and a float for our Y offset. We're just going to initialize both of these to zero. Back in our graphics header, we need to include this new header. And we actually have to go up to show all files and move this header up to our graphics folder. And then we can uncheck show all files. So now our graphics header should be recognizing that. Next we need to actually initialize our constant buffer that we had created. So let's go into our initialize scene function and go to the bottom. All right, and the way that this will work is it's going to be a dynamic buffer so that we can change it. It's going to be a constant buffer for the bind flags. We need the CPU to be able to access and write to this buffer, and we will do that by mapping and unmapping to the data. For the byte width of the buffer, you would think, you know, oh, it's going to be the size of whatever our structure was. However, uh, buffers, constant buffers in HLSL have to be 16 byte aligned. So what we are doing here is we are just aligning it to be 16 bytes. So we're passing in 8 bytes and it will up it to 16. If we passed in 20 bytes, it would up it to 32, etc. Now, there's certain cases where you have to actually put in padding, but 
it doesn't apply to this case, and we will probably get into that after we make our template for the constant buffer. But for right now, we are not going to worry about the padding. Just know that this is going to have to be in 16 byte uh, alignment. Next, we are just uh, creating the buffer where we pass in the description and the constant buffers get address of. So now we want to actually change the values for this constant buffer whenever we are drawing. So let's go up to where we are rendering. And the way that we will do this is we are going to declare a struct for our constant buffer data. We're going to set the X and Y offset that we want to map. We're going to create a map sub resource so that we can access the data for the constant buffer. We're going to call map from the device context and we pass in the pointer to the constant buffer that we want to map. And we have to pass in map right discard for the CPU access flags. And then we have to pass in the mapped resource so that we can access the pointer to this data. And what it will do is it will put in the pointer to that constant buffer data in the P data field and mapped resource. So we're going to copy the memory from our struct right here into this mapped resource P data. And the number of bytes we're copying is just however big our uh, struct is. And then after we've mapped that data, then we are going to call unmap, and this will allow the GPU to access uh, this data again. So what this should be doing is it should be moving up our image by 0 0.5 on the y-axis. So currently our texture's coordinates are something like negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And for the top right, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5. For the bottom left, it's negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5. For the bottom right, it's 0 0.5, or my bad, the uh, y is negative over here, and then negative 0 0.5. So we know the top of our, of our screen that we are viewing, uh, the y-axis will be 1. So we are adding 0 0.5 to our y-axis, so it should move the top of this to the top of the screen. And it should move the bottom of this uh, up to the middle of the screen. So like about, about right here. So let's test this out and see what we get. Oh, it failed to compile. Let's see. Oh, I redefined HR down where we had initialized that constant buffer. Okay, let's try this again. It didn't move. What did I do wrong here? Let's see. Okay, so the reason it didn't move is because I forgot that before we draw, we need to set our constant buffer. So what we can do is we can, for the vertex shader, we can do VS, or device context, VS set constant buffers. We'll pass in the start slot, which was zero because we chose register zero. The number of buffers is one. We're just updating one constant buffer. And then the pointer to the pointer of constant buffers so we can just do constant buffer get address of. All right, and now let's test this. And it should have moved. There we go. So now it's moved and it's at the top of the screen. So that is all that we are going to cover for this tutorial. As you can tell, the way that we are handling the constant buffer is pretty ugly. So in the next tutorial, we are going to make a template to or basically just wrap it. And then after that tutorial, we will finally get into matrices and do some rotations and some transformations and that good stuff.